Welcome back to the Classic Game Room Podcast. It continues because the CGR Forever stream gives it a reason to live indefinitely. Letting you know what's going on in the world of Classic Game Room now that we have absorbed all time, space, and reality into one Classic Game Room Forever stream. Did you see this coming? (laughs) Because I didn't. I often hear from people who are like, what's Mark planning? He's got some strategy. <laughs> I wish I did. In, uh, in the short term, at least, I also want to record a podcast to tweak uh, the microphone here and get my voice audio back to where it used to be, using all kinds of different gear these days, because I've got a huge project coming up, uh, unrelated to Classic Game Room, but one where I need my voice. I mean, it's kind of related to Classic Game Room, but I'll talk about that in a little bit, and uh A few moments here, I'll get started with some CGR stuff. Uh, But beforehand, let's take a listen to the newest Turbo Volcano song. This is Fortress of Debauchery. So after the last CGR 2085, I could see that there was a problem with delivery. The the content itself seemed perfectly good. Viewers seemed to enjoy it. I thought it was pretty good. You know, I've been doing this long enough to know it wasn't something I did wrong. It was an approach. I approached it wrong, and maybe I just didn't want to deal with it, is what what it really was starting to come down to. So I was looking into uh, immediately just calling it even and uh, just pulling the plug and you know phasing it out again and then rolling all the oh the resources are all basically borrowed from Omega Ronin anyway at this point uh, because they're they're too like I mean they're like apples and oranges they complement each other well but, but they're, they're very different and I can talk about that later it's absurd that the uh, the better known show is on loan from the uh, futuristic cinematic industrial synthwave project but uh, that's uh, that that is the way it is After the fifth episode of 2085, I put it, put it on hold and uh, decided to just take a breather for a bit and contemplate uh, what, what's going on, take a, look through, take a look through the numbers, although I could already see they didn't make any goddamn sense. So I did a podcast last week because I, you know, I, I knew people had some beers ready on Friday. I'd like Friday to be the release day, and it looks like that's going to happen, but um, I have certainly changed some things around, which I think is a good way to do things. If you do what everyone else is doing, you're going to lose. I'm not good at doing what everyone else is doing. I'm, I'm weird. So the Omega Ronin project has been in development for years. Uh, it's a great name, and it's a, it's a concept I was working on even five years ago. I think there's some old videos where I was like, scribbling together some, uh, some comics and some artwork and stuff, trying to put together this huge science fiction story. And I think it goes back to 2019. I, I needed a video component or some kind of social media component to pay for the development costs because it, it, took, it takes time. Especially these, uh, the comics and the graphic novels and all that stuff. They're, they're really time consuming and you have to get out there and aggressively market it. But at the time the YouTube channel was just being torn to pieces. I discontinued production after that. Without that video component I couldn't I couldn't justify the uh, the production time that went into the uh, the creation of the book. Like it worked pretty well, like a decade ago for Lord Carnage, Nethel, the Cyborg Ninja, and that stuff. Uh, but Omega Ronin was a big was a pretty big job, and I ended up just sort of tabling it in 2000, late 2019, 2000, and didn't really think about it at all 
at least I don't think I did, at least not much, until about uh, 2022 when I was putting together music projects uh, for, for social media marketing. Once again, coming back at this social media marketing from a different angle, and I created Turbo Volcano first, and I wanted to create some synthwave stuff, and I, I chose Omega Ronin because I had the brand name sitting there and the URL and all that stuff, and it just fit perfectly well. And the Omega Ronin sound like immediately got some attention out on the streaming media services. Like people like it and they just add it and it just, it slowly grows, you know, it's not like an overnight success. And I was enjoying working on it and just getting into the, uh, the synthwave sound and just developing it and expanding it more with hardware rather than just in software instruments and like just, just getting better at producing. And I think by syntax rhythm, the sound really came together. That's one of my favorite Omega Ronin albums. A syntax rhythm with a 2400 baud romance. I sat down and like listened to that like a hundred times. Like this, this is pretty much what I'm going for. I was pretty pleased with myself, and I just continued to push the Omega Ronin sound that direction with, with bigger sounds, and eventually it started to kind of merge a little bit with Turbo Volcano. Like the, like the, the space weirdness factor started to come in, and I liked that. I think that made the Omega Ronin sound actually really interesting, like a combination of like you know, your Miami Vice and 80s new wave synth pop inspired synth wave combined with like this cinematic influence. And that kind of brought me back to like the storyline I was working on for the manga or the graphic novel or whatever about like robots in space in the future and like this dystopian society and like, you know, just the Blade Runner visual style that everyone likes combined with like the cinematic music and synth wave and I started to work on those animation videos and then I unearthed the uh, the storyline once again for Omega Ronin which I rewrote a couple times but I you know the core of my business is actually print like, I know people think I do video Vid video is like a really small part of what I do because it's the video business has just been destroyed by cell phones and uh, to some degree live streaming I guess um, but print is really what I'm interested in and I want Omega, and I wanted Omega Ronin to get into print, but it had to be dragged along by the music, which is funny because you would think maybe the music would be like the, the bigger thing, but probably print is the bigger thing. But it's got to have like the music element to pull it along with the uh, the marketing and exposure side. It's always like this weird chicken and the egg thing. And then in the middle of all that, the classic game room stuff kind of got some attention because of the social media. And the music actually really complements classic game room, I think. And I think a lot of people seem, seem to enjoy the music and the video game style. And of course, it's my music that I own, so I'm not getting copyright flags on my own music. Anyway, the reason I'm talking about this here in the classic game room podcast is that, well, they're pretty much, they're kind of tied together. But in addition to providing music for classic game room, Omega Ronin, the, the synthwave, the, the electronic music project is launching this print project. And looking beyond just like streaming media services and whatnot, my plan was to always eventually go to like physical media with Omega Ronin, which I did with Iron Metropolis, the first out the gate on CD. It's done pretty well. But also I thought, you know, I've got like 10, 12 hours of music. I'm going to put them all together into like one giant live stream and just send, get it out there and, you know, just whatever. What the hell? See what happens. got like 10 hours of Omega Ronin. I have no idea how many hours of classic game room I have. That might that might be interesting on the same on the same format. So I stayed up late one night and just chopped together a huge mix of uh, videos. 
I had the drives out anyway from doing a lot of the best of work. And uh, yeah, I think viewers enjoyed seeing this endless forever stream of classic game room videos. And I didn't really realize that there was like this kind of cool chat feature. So, you know, people can hang out and talk about them. And um, I try to pop in and out every now and then. While watching this endless live stream of classic game room videos, the forever stream, what occurred to me was the inconsistency over 25 years. Uh, though I think the show has always been professionally produced in most respects, you know, what I was able to do in 2008 or 1999 is really, really vastly different than what I can do now. And I was using different equipment in like the 2011, 2013 era, which looks and sounds different than what I'm using now and what I used in 2008. And like, just everything changed so much. And I'm digging through all this stuff and it's like I'm mixing... I'm mixing for a party, like I'm DJing something. Like you always, when you're doing a party, you always take it up high and then you bring it down. You build the crowd back up and you bring it down. And it's, it's it's like the same way with the reviews. There's like the big ones that everyone likes. Then you bring it down to like some of the older, lesser known, totally obscure Atari games and bring it back up with like the R Zone. Then bring it down with some sort of like weird 5200 game no one's ever heard of in monotone mark. And then you bring it back up with something new with the big music and you know the bigger visuals. And it's like this fun ride. And I think you need like a thousand hours or two thousand or three, whatever I have, it's a lot. A lot of hours of content to do this and give viewers just this endless classic game room television channel. And that uh, brought me back to the idea of just, instead of just spending like all this time on one project, on one video that goes out and no one watches it because I guess YouTube doesn't like that kind of video anymore. So nobody's alerted to it. I'm just now looking at the live stream as sort of like the home of all of it. If that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. I'm waving my arms around, by the way. Gesticulating wildly and excited about this interesting way to deliver classic game room that actually highlights the longevity and the diversity of the content that I've covered over the years. And uh, hopefully you caught the most recent review with this in mind. The first review out the gate is Mr. Run and Jump on the Atari 2600 on CGR Forever. It's in the live stream, so hopefully you catch it. And I'm looking at bringing back some of the other stuff, which I've enjoyed watching again, like the strategic hyper instructional tactics videos. You know, now I can produce more diverse content, I think. It certainly seems promising. Um... So that, that's the explanation for where this came from. Um, it seems like a good way to present an infinite number of hours of classic game room because there's a lot of it. I've barely scratched the surface. So what I'm doing, at least for the moment, is 4 o'clock on Fridays, Eastern Standard Time, live stream episode drops into CGR forever, the forever stream. So get your beers ready. Checkpoint. Four might be a little early for some of you, but, you know, I would argue that it's after five somewhere. I might move it to six, but at 5.30 I'm doing a Bandcamp live album release. So, four o'clock Eastern Time on YouTube, you can come hang out in the Forever Stream, check out the new episode or episodes, whatever I got that week. And then 5.30 head over to Bandcamp for the album release, and uh, maybe even at six o'clock there'll be something. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. Regardless, your beers that you've purchased ahead of time for classic game room viewing on Friday will not go to waste. Anyway, so like I've said before, if people are watching the show and I can keep production costs in check and it's fun to make and isn't you know, crushing my company, then Classic Game Room can continue and not only celebrate its 25th anniversary, but uh, maybe more beyond that. Otherwise, it's just going to get eaten by another project. And the Omega Ronin project is monstrous. Um, yeah, the Classic Game Room, Classic Game Room, the brand, or, or the show, I shouldn't say the brand, the show, Classic Game Room, the show, is always kind of been pigeonholed on YouTube as just like a gaming show. It's always in the shadow of like 
angry shows and like the you know the, the, the mega celebrities and the influencers and so it's always just kind of stuck there which from the producing standpoint is very limiting like what am I what can I you know what can I do here <laughs> what can I do that's so different than what everybody else does and though I think it is different and unique I think you also have to have some patience and take some time with it to, to maybe see that um, Omega Ronin can face a similar problem with just getting pigeonholed as synthwave because there's a lot of talented people out there making like 80s inspired synthwave and I don't want to get pigeonholed as somebody who's just making 80s inspired synthwave you know that, that there, there's a lot more to it than that in my head as as ludicrous and silly as it might be there's a huge science fiction adventure in there and this is its way out working on what I've been working on for a while now is an Omega Ronin release hopefully on vinyl that is meant to be a companion piece to Omega Ronin the graphic novel so that you read the graphic novel while listening to Omega Ronin so it's like an amped up version of one of those old read-along cassette tapes that many of us grew up with you know like the Star Wars ones There'd be like a voice and some music and turn the page, ding, ding, except uh, with Synthwave and my voice and a, a totally different and very out there science fiction style, but with the with a cinematic Synthwave soundtrack that just brings down the house and sounds awesome and works well with the, with this story about. You'll see. I'm putting together a huge like launch plan right now, and I need I need, a, I need to present a lot of artwork and what and some animation stuff and like what this is going to sound like and what the actual record packaging is going to look like because this is going to be like a big deal where you get like a huge album and like a book there'll be a couple books artwork posters all kinds of fun stuff so it's it's kind of fun to sit back and watch omega ronin you know evolve and and and, and take classic game room in some places i didn't expect and then classic game room is a good place to break in a lot of the omega ronin music and I'd love it if these two projects actually really work because this is tons of fun. So um, that's all I got for now. We'll see how this stuff just sort of evolves throughout the year. I'm pretty pleased that the uh, Forever Stream gives me a reason to go and mess around with some different formats that didn't work for Classic Game Room in the past, but I think might do uh, pretty well now combined in this like roller coaster ride, combined with this roller coaster ride of CGR over 25 years. It's pretty ridiculous, but. Here we go forever. See you next time in the Classic Game Room Podcast. 4 o'clock, maybe also 6 o'clock on YouTube, Eastern Time, 5.30 on Bandcamp. Look up Omega Ronin and make sure to turn up the volume. See you next time.